Hey, welcome to Electron Online, and in this video, I'm trying to show you how the unit circle relates to the actual graph of the sine function. So here we have the y and theta axis on which we're going to draw the, uh, the sine function, and here we have the unit circle and the y values of a point on the unit circle. So this is the xy point right there, the xy point, and of course this here is the y value, and by definition the y value is equal to the sine of theta on the unit circle and of course for appropriate angles of 30 degrees, 45, 60 and 90, 120, 135, 150 and 180 and so forth all the way around the unit circle we should get appropriate values on the y-axis for those particular values for the angle. So starting with 30 degrees or pi over 6 which is this point right here, this is pi over 6 or 30 degrees you can see that this point right here is related to this point right here and that would be one point on the graph at a 45 degree angle that would be right here we are at this point at a 60 degree angle right here this is 60 degrees uh, we're going to be uh, right over here and at 90 degrees we're right there at one so that's how you find the appropriate points on the graph that corresponds to the point on the inner circle equal to the y value of those points on the inner circle relative to the particular angles for example this here is a 30 degree angle which is equal to pi over 6 here this one here is the 45 degree angle here this is the 60 degree angle and so forth and that's how we're going to go all the way around the circle so the first portion of the graph will look like this when we connect all the points and we continue over here at 120 degrees we're back to this point right there that would be this point right here corresponding to this point right there at 135 degrees right here we're at this point at 150 degrees we're at this point and then we're back to zero so you can see that our graph looks like that and then continuing on uh, below the x-axis right here that's this point right there that would be for the next point we're over here for the next point we're over there next point we're over there and the 270 degree angle we're over here and so then the graph continues like this and finally, when we find the last few points, so this point right here is corresponding to this point right here. The next one over here corresponds to this point right there. The next point right there corresponds to this point right here. And finally, we're all the way around the circle, and we're back to there. And so our next set of points look like that. And so that's what our sine function looks like. Notice that the points in the graph of the sine function directly correspond to the y values along the unit circle as you go all the way, all the way around the uh, circle and for all the various angles on the unit circle and hopefully that will show you the relationship between the sine function or on the graph versus the unit circle now if you continue past 2 pi the whole thing starts over again and so then the next point would be 30 degrees past the 2, point, uh, 2 pi value which is over here and you go back up here and the function would simply continue as it did before in this direction and it will continue as it did before in this direction so you can see that it's an endless infinite graph in both directions but if we talk about the function we usually talk about the function between 0 and 2 pi of course it repeats infinitely in both directions as you just continue going around the unit circle forever and ever and ever and there's the relationship between the unit circle and how we graph y equals the sine of x or y equals the sine of theta. Usually we use theta, sometimes we use x, sometimes we use t, depending upon what we want to call the independent variable. 